Hi there everybody and welcome to this video. Today we're going to be talking through the chart of accounts in uh, Business Central and just um, what we need to do to get a chart of accounts set up within our BC environment. Um, so I'm just logged into my demonstration environment here and what I'm going to do is go to finance and my chart of accounts. Um, and as always in Business Central, we are presented with the list view first when we go to any page. So I'm on the list of uh, my chart of accounts right now. And I can click one of the records here to get into the um, general ledger account card. So if I click on 10100 here for income services, I can go to my GL account card where I can see a little bit more details. Um, so we'll come back here in a second, but let me just step back to the list view and we'll just run through some of the different elements that we need to go through when setting up our chart of accounts on this page. Um, so the first field that we have here is the number field. Um, so obviously this is quite important. It's the number that we're going to enter throughout our system when we're using this general ledger code. So be it on journals or documents, um, whenever we use this general ledger code, we'll be typing in 10100, or we can use the name of that GL code, Income Services, to, to search for that as well. Um, so just a few considerations when you're setting the number of your um, general ledger codes on your chart of accounts. Um, be sure to leave plenty of space in between those if you possibly can. So I've just added a few accounts in here, but you can see um, there's a huge gap between the accounts of so this one's 10200, this is 10250. There's a, a gap in between there if we do need to add an account in at some point in the future. Um, so it's just something to think about when we're setting up our chart of accounts. Uh, we don't want to have to, um, a little bit later, have to renumber all of the accounts on our chart of accounts because we didn't leave enough space to, uh, to input more accounts. So the next field that we have here is the name and it's just a, a name field so it indicates the name of the account but as I mentioned uh, we can use the number or the name to search for this GL code through um, the different areas of the system such as journals and documents. So next we have the, the net change and balance and this obviously shows me the um, current account balance so I can drill down into this uh, this number so 2153.27 I can drill down into there and that will show me the general ledger entries for my GL code 10100 income services. And I can use the filter totals by to the left hand side. So I just use the little funnel up on the top right here to enable that area um, of, my, uh, of my page. So if I go filter totals by and I can add a filter, for example, for my department. Um, so that's one of my global dimensions and uh, I can pick the administration department. And as you can see here, what it's done is it's changed the net change of the balance fields there to only show transactions within GL account 10100 that are to do with the administration department. And if I click into that 50, it shows me the one entry that we have here, which is an invoice um, 108210, and the department code there is set to administration. So let me step back and just reset my filters. Um, going on to the next column here, uh, we've got our income statement or balance sheet field. Um, so you can drop down, I'll show you that on the GL account card in, uh, in a moment, but we can use that field to say this GL account is either on the income statement or it's on the balance sheet. Um, so the account category and the account subcategory go hand in hand um, and we can use those for reporting purposes. We can assign an account category and an account subcategory to our general ledger codes and it just makes life easier for reporting. So next we have the account type and the totaling and these sort of go hand in hand um, if I just explain how. Um, well firstly we have um, a heading account type which is literally just a heading. As you can see my account type heading here is assigned to GL account number 10,000 and that is 
for um, our income statement. So it's just a heading. I can't post to this account type because it's a heading. It just says income statement and it's just used to organize, to, to view on my chart accounts to say this is the beginning of our income statement. So next I have uh, an account type of begin total and this is account 10,001, which is um, income. And that sort of goes hand in hand with the end total here, which is account number 10,990 and that's total income. So why do they go hand in hand? Well, in the totaling column here for account 10,990, you'll see that I have uh, a little bit of text here that says 10,001. Um, and then two full stops, which means up until 10,990. So what does this mean? Well, it means that in general ledger code 10,990, we are totaling accounts 10,001 through until 10,990. And that basically means that the number that we have here, so minus 422586.62, if I drill down into there, that is the total of all account numbers that sit in between our begin total and our end total. So you can see here, I've got a few different geo codes. I've got 10500, 300, and I'll scroll down, I've got 10200. But essentially what this end total and begin total do is it allows us to total all of the accounts that sit in between those two, 10,001, and 10,990. So once again, um, you can't post to end total or begin total accounts. You can only post to posting accounts within your chart of accounts on your general ledger. So in this case, I can post to 10,100, 10,101, etc. But I can't post to my 10,001 account or 10,000 or 10,990. Um, so just a, another thing there regarding the begin and end totals, as you can see, it gives us the nice little indentation that we have here on our chart of accounts. And they are totally optional. I should say you don't have to use those begin and end totals if you don't want to. So what I'll do next is let me just jump into a general ledger account card, and I'm just going to show you some of the uh, other fields that we have um, underneath here. So just quickly run through some of these. Um, so we've got the reconciliation account field, which basically denotes whether or not this account is a reconciliation account or not. So we'll do another video on, the, on that particular functionality, but it's just to do with quickly accessing that account from other areas of the system, just to view whether um, um, the um, account balance is, uh, is going to be okay with you or not before you post the journal. It's just a quick way that you can use to, to view the account balance from other areas. So next we have the automatic extended text, which basically means that um, when you use this particular general ledger code on certain types of documents or journals in other areas of the system, you can choose to pull through a bunch of extended texts in conjunction with this account. Uh, so we will do another video on that at some point in the future. So direct posting means that you can directly post to this general ledger code from other areas of the system. Generally speaking, this is totally fine for this account because it's a revenue account, but on your control accounts, so your debtor, creditor, bank accounts, VAT accounts, and so on, you would not typically tick direct posting. So blocked means that the account cannot be used anymore. Where the account is blocked, I can't make any postings to it at all. Uh, last date modified is just basically the date that it was last modified. Uh, it doesn't show me who or, or what was modified at that point. There are other things that we can do to switch on that sort of functionality if we want to, but this just shows the last date that this record was modified. So next we have the omit description in uh, default description in journal. And when this is flagged as yes, it basically means that the description for this account, which is this field here, won't come through to that journal. So we'd need to type it every time, basically. So we have the review policy next, which uh, there is another video on this channel about. So um, it's just to do with reviewing the entries on this general ledger account. 
Um, so we next have the posting um, tab, fast tab, which uh, basically contains some fields that are by default inherited onto journals and documents when we use this particular general ledger code. Um, so typically here, if it was one that we use for transactions, you would have a general product posting group and a VAT product posting group. Um, so you can set those if you want to. You don't have to set those um, if you don't want to. But if you use it on transactions, it's normally better to set those values um, up on the general ledger code. Um, okay, so we here we have the um, default intercompany partner um, um, general ledger account number, and I believe this is used in the intercompany module, but we can cover that one off in uh, in another video. And we also have the default deferral template, which looks up another table to do with deferrals. And um, again, I think we'll cover this off in another video, but you can use deferral templates to defer revenue and cost um, over periods, um, and you can set a default deferral template for your general ledger code in this field. So next we've got uh, the consolidation fast tab, which contains the consolidation debit and consolidation credit accounts. So we can fill these fields in with values. They will be used when we are using the consolidation module um, and you usually set these up in your subsidiary companies and they roll up to the consolidation company. So um, again, we'll do another video on consolidation um, and we can also set the um, consolidation translation method um, for this um, um, particular general ledger code. And this is to do with the foreign um, currency exchange rate if we consolidate across subsidiaries that have different ex different currencies involved, we can set this up um, in the subsidiary against my general ledger code. Um, and here we use um, the uh, reporting, I believe it's for where we report in an additional reporting currency on BC. Um, you can set this account for um, um, the adjustments on that particular function if you want to. Um, and finally here, we've got the cost accounting fast tab, which is used in conjunction with the cost accounting module. Again, um, I think that's best covered off in uh, in another video. Um, so a few of the things that I just want to show you quickly, um, let me just add a new account to uh, my chart of accounts here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go new up at the top here and I'm going to go 10103 and I'm going to go new account for demo and just going to leave it at that. So I'm not going to fill anything else in just a, a quick account setup here. And you can see here it's nicely slotted in order number between 10102 and 10200. Um, so when I add a new account, um, you'll notice that the indentation on this one isn't quite right. So it sits outside of the indentation of the other accounts. So what I can do here is just go home and indent chart of accounts. So what this does is it's a function that says it updates the indentation of all of the GL accounts. And uh, I'm just gonna say yes. And what that does is it pushes the new account that we've just set up there in line with the other accounts and it knows the level of indentation there based on the begin total and end total that my new account sits in between. So it knows to push it to that level because 10103 sits between 10,001 and 10,990 on my general ledger. Um, just some of the other interesting bits here. Um, Obviously, I think it's always really dangerous to delete records in BC, um, especially one from your chart of accounts. There is a control that we have in place to um, allow this or disallow this. And you can use um, this functionality on the general ledger setup page. Um, so we've got check GL account usage, um, which basically checks um, um, that GL accounts are being used, if GL accounts are being used, sorry, in setup tables before they're removed. And we can also set the block deletion of GL accounts, which is definitely a good checkbox to use if we don't want to uh, allow users to delete GL accounts. Um, but we can use the check GL account deletion after, which is a date field. And this can be used to prohibit the deleting of GL accounts um, after a particular date in time. Um, 
Obviously, if you do have a play with that, I would always do that in a sandbox environment first. Don't, please don't delete anything from a production environment without having tested it somewhere else first. Um, only other thing to mention is that when we're setting up our chart of accounts, typically we would import that into the system using something like configuration packages or the configuration worksheet. Um, there are other videos on that which you can check out. Um, obviously you can add the accounts in manually yourself, but it's a long task to do that. Um, to, to do that manually so you do have um, configuration packages and worksheets to help with that and you do also have don't forget the edit in Excel tool which will allow you to add new accounts very quickly to the chart of account screen. Okay so that's everything that I wanted to run through I hope you found that useful thanks for your time guys and uh, I'll see you on the next one thank you